So we have some questions from viewers about specific provisions. Some of these may uh, we may not know much about uh, until the targets that have been discussed here have been established. But let's run through a few of these uh, issues. A viewer from Kirkhoven wants to know what's the status of House File 608, Senate File 1414, which were bills designed to help beginning farmers with tax incentives. Anybody know what's happened with either of those two bills? Or, uh, are they in any of these packages? Well, in a... In a nutshell, uh, there isn't a tax bill any longer because it was vetoed. And mm -hmm. so they're really basically at square one relative to what issues will be addressed uh, in the compromise that we're uh, currently uh, talking about. Um, I don't recall if that was in both House and Senate provisions initially. I think it was in the, or I know it was in the, uh, in the House bill. Yeah. Um, and... Uh, It'll um, it'll be a new issue, but it's uh, at a at a point having passed the uh, House at least, and maybe the senators can recall whether it was in the Senate bill or not. But uh, it would be at that high level of discussion once the compromise and the target is reached. I'm pretty sure it was in the Senate yeah. bill. I believe we had it in there, and of course it's in play as we talk mm -hmm. about the total dollars in the tax bill. Yeah. It's easier yeah. to say what will be in there. I certainly yeah. strongly favor that one. We want to yeah. have the next generation of farmers be incentivized to come in and uh, take over the fields and do the next generation of work. So uh, the things that we have in the tax bill to debate, I'd certainly support yeah. that one. And unfortunately, we don't remember all the numbers yeah. and all the data that goes in, but I know I carried one of the bills that had this type of language in, whether it's this one or not, but, you know, it. We just got it to the table, and I know on the Senate side it, it, it made the next move. And I'm, I'm, but now, like you say, mm -hmm. it, when you, first the bill gets vetoed, a lot of it comes back, but there has to be changes to make it mm -hmm. different and make everybody a player on it. So hopefully it's still in there because it's something we need. Yeah, there's another element in the uh, uh, tax bill that uh, hopefully we can uh, address. We tried to do it last year. We, we actually did it. It just didn't get across the <laughs> finish line and uh, uh, got set back. Uh, but on the property tax issue uh, in uh, rural Minnesota, uh, with you've got uh, people that are that are land poor, <laughs> uh, they've got some expensive uh, property, and and when you end up with a school referendum, uh, that really uh, uh, ends up putting up uh, quite a strain on the property taxes. And so there is a provision in that uh, tax bill. Uh, that would uh, use some uh, state money to relieve that. The one thing we don't want to do in that circumstance is in any way upset the situation for a referendum for a local school building. Uh, we, we've still got to get that done. Uh, but on the other hand, we can't break people up in business on property taxes doing it. So I hope, you know, certainly that that stays in there in some way, shape, or form, one way or another, uh, because uh, uh, folks might think ag is going great guns right now, uh, but uh, the prices out there are not uh, not real good. Uh, they're uh, they get people are getting by, but uh, it's not like it was a few years ago. And I speak from experience. I've still got a few cows up at Aiken. <laughs> I, I just want to agree with you, Representative. We had a school bond referendum fail just this year in Cleveland, Minnesota, which is actually just outside of my district in Senator Drayheim's district. And uh, that seems like a very reasonable way yeah. to allow farmers to vote on school bond referendums on the merits yeah, without exactly. having the question be, um, can I afford to see this pass? Because uh, rural communities need their school it's often a center of the community in addition to where the kids get smarter. We just had yeah. the same thing in my district, uh, rural school, because in my area everybody's a rural school. Park Rapids, where I live, is 3,900 population, and I'm, that's the largest city in my whole district. So it's a lot of small towns, very rural, and one of the small schools had a referendum, and it failed two weeks yeah. ago. And it's heavily rural with farming and all that acreage, and uh, I think this this bill language would be a big asset to all of our rural schools. I think being a uh, member of the tax committee, I, I have to say that this was not a controversial provision, no, and uh, the governor had his reasons for vetoing the tax bill, but uh, his veto message didn't uh, focus on, on uh, uh, the ag issue at all. So um, I would say you can't predict what the outcome will be totally, <laughs> but uh, being it's not one of the controversial provisions in the bill. I would say to your listener, stay tuned, but it would probably have a high yeah. probability of making it. 
Senator Friends, I'll just tell you that this is the second week in a row we've had a discussion about the wonderful Cleveland Public School because uh, your colleague uh, in, on the House side was here last week uh, bragging up the Cleveland School. So uh, we're two weeks in a row on that now. So uh, Well, he's dead on talking about some of their successes athletically uh, and I guess talking about the referendum. I'm, I have a lot of faith in those residents. They know what they're voting on. And if we had this particular yeah. provision, which I think had bipartisan support, Absolutely. Um, yeah. the people in Cleveland I think would be a lot happier and they'd have some schools. Yeah. And, we could talk about that. I promise not to bring it up if you have me back next week. All right. Very good. Very good. <laughs>